What's up guys and welcome back. I just got back from the track yesterday and before I forget all this, as it was a very interesting day, we're gonna go ahead and recap what had happened throughout this day. Well, so far, today's been pretty much a disaster, guys. I should not have even tried that Michelin front tire. That was very stupid. I slid that thing all over the track, scared the crap out of me. I don't know how I didn't crash on the last corner. Obviously the S22s, those, are, those have been just fine for me, but I shouldn't have even tried. But, so needless to say, after sliding and scaring myself to death, I came and I tried to take the axle off and go get some front and rear tires here at the track and I destroyed that. So needless to say, the day started off pretty freaking bad. The beginning, obviously, issues with the R7. After that, I finally figured out, got the uh, 4RR running, I got it on the track, and I moved from C group to B group. So this is my first time in B group so far, and I was getting destroyed on the track. So it was kind of like letting me down a little bit. So that was the middle of the day. And then kind of by the end of the day, I had met a few people. This dude on Ninja 400 was absolutely destroying me. And I just went up, talked to him and said, hey, dude, just let me follow your lines for a while. And after following him for a little while, I lost three seconds in my track time. And I started getting, started passing people, having a good time and started feeling like I actually belonged in the B group, which was cool. So as a whole, the day was quite interesting. Uh, to get back to the R7, to start at the beginning of the day where I had started failing at, starting with the R7 here, the first thing I noticed, I got to talk to some dude about suspension. Now I have, I'm not great with suspension. I've told you guys that on multiple videos, but I have a basic understanding of rebound, compression, getting my sag set right. And I chose to just go for it in the morning to try and figure out the suspension. So as I was messing with it, I could not get the rebound to do, well, anything. It's technically tension on the top of this fork. And I was unable to get anything to really react or change or make the front end feel the way I want it to feel, the way my other bikes feel. So I went and talked to somebody who was actually works at a dealer, sells freaking bikes, works on bikes, and is good with suspension. Came over, clarified everything I was uh, trying to explain to him and said, yeah, you're right, that's what you're supposed to be doing. And showed him what I was getting out of the bike and he said, and he was just obviously politely trying to tell me that it's a budget motorcycle. <laughs> Which I know, I got it guys, it's a $10,000 motorcycle. I know you guys are sitting there thinking like, well, no crap dude, it's a, you know, it's a $10,000 motorcycle. It doesn't come with the best components. For whatever reason, I kind of thought that I would at least be able to kind of dial it in. After messing with it, I, I don't think so. I think that I, the sag is okay, the compression is, is acceptable. I can't get the rebound any softer. It just springs up and pops on me. Some kind of innards replacement is kind of be necessary if you really want to push any harder, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So I know that at some point I'm going to have to do that. So I immediately learned how important suspension was, which keep, kind of makes me even more frustrated thinking about how much money we spend on looks, uh, exhaust, intake, let's make her go faster when we don't even have good suspension. <laughs> we don't have decent enough braking once it warms up to slow ourselves down, but yet all we want to do is make it go faster. Uh, get off my soapbox. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. So like it really kind of opened my eyes to like the important things, suspension, tires, and I guess steering damper. Those things to me, I think are more important for the, for the motorcycle for us to get going faster. And then once we start being able to push the motorcycle, then yeah, sure, we make it go a little bit faster. So I think we do it, kind of did our little ass backwards, but just sharing with my experience and kind of what I'm learning as I go. The next major thing that I did wrong was after sliding this front tire multiple times in the first session, like I was so frustrated, I got off the track and I just said, you know what? I'm gonna take the front row tire off and I'm gonna go pay the price for those Q5s and we're gonna go out and we're gonna have some fun on this bike. And in my midst of being frustrated, working a little bit too fast, a little bit too hard, not thinking about it, sweating my ass off, exhausted, just got off the track. I uh, completely destroyed this rear axle cover. And so what I had done wrong guys was I didn't watch my own damn video for one, <laughs> which step one is to loosen the axle nut. And step two, then you can loosen your uh, tensioning screws or your chain tensioner and kind of loosen some of this stuff up so that you can get the nut off, pull out your axle and away you go. I did not do that. I just went ahead and loosened everything up and I went to go crank to loosen that bolt while everything inside moved and bent and bound up and I just stripped out the center of the axle guard. So. I just ordered another one. We got that in route. We're gonna go ahead and put all this back together. I'll make some videos. I know a lot of you have complained about like chain slack adjustment video. 
not you know showing as much as I possibly could with it. So I'll try and make a better one for you guys. Multiple of you have asked for that. And also we've had multiple track days on this thing and it needs a damn oil change. So we're gonna go ahead and do another video on oil change to kind of update some of you guys who've asked for a better video. So those are coming as well as a slew of upgrades to the motorcycle to keep moving forward. So that was pretty much how the R7 went this morning. I was quite frustrated with, you know, really wanting to show you guys the difference between the two bikes. Uh, maybe it was too much to ask for me out there to try and do that. You know, I'm still very, you know, new at riding on the track. So maybe I'm trying to do too much while I'm out there. So at least after I kind of calmed down, took my suit off, had some lunch, relaxed, pushed the R7 out of the way, and then just kind of turned my focus to the ZX4RR. I had such a good time with the bike. To give you guys some kind of upfront like comparisons right off the bat when it came to the bikes, like I really love the ergos of this motorcycle. Like you feel like you're on a race bike, you're there, you're ready. You're already like half leaning off the motorcycle, ready to go. Where this thing, like I feel like I'm upright, but the tires, the suspension, the way the bike runs, just listening to it, purr out through those gears, like it just feels so good. There were so many times where I went into a corner too hot, which I did actually run this thing off the track three times that day, coming in too hot, triggering the ABS and getting a little nervous and not wanting to lean her over while she's triggering. So I just go off the track. So little things I was learning throughout the day kind of on the bike, but ultimately like when I would go into the corner and actually commit to the corner, and just lay it down even though I'm giving too much break. Like the confidence that came out of these crappy Dunlops that come on this motorcycle, like it, they just stuck there for me. Now I did slide the rear end pretty good trying to follow a buddy of mine and some guy tried to slip between me and him on a corner. So I just decided I would go for it and let off the brakes and rolled into it and then grab throttle. I was at a full lane angle, knee on the ground and that just ass end just kind of went out on me. It came back. Stood up the bike, it just kept going like nothing. I was like, well, another little butt pucker moment, but it just, like sliding that rear just feels, doesn't scare me as much. Like when the front tire is all over the track sliding, like that scares the crap out of me, guys. So I feel really bad I did not give this motorcycle a decent enough chance with the front tire, like using this crappy front tire. That was just a terrible idea, guys. And we're gonna go ahead and get all this R7 fixed back up again. We're gonna get it back on the track. We're gonna have some fun with it. In fact, the next track day that I do is gonna be freaking awesome. I actually am going to ride with Josh Heron so that I can actually get some one-on-one -on -one training so that he could you know, do whatever he does. Obviously, as a professional, he's gonna watch me ride and tell me how I could do better. So I think that's gonna be really cool. I hope you guys are interested in watching something like that. So thanks, this was the recap. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.